Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Everybody and welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malinoff, and with me as always is Mark Souza. We are about to begin a new season, and not an NFL offseason. The Alliance of American Football begins tomorrow. We will discuss that. We'll also discuss some people's predictions for the next five Super Bowl champions and our reaction to it. Also, Combine uh, players have announced their well, college players have announced they will be in the combine. That's a better way to put it. But first, we should talk about it because it's our title for the day. Alliance of American Football of America and North America has it will begin tomorrow on CBS. It's actually on a major network. Yeah. The wait, hold on. Let me get this right. I'm going to butcher it. the uh, The Alliance of American Football. Yes. On February 9th, which there is we tomorrow. Go. Yeah, yeah. On CBS. Mm-hmm. Which I'm very surprised they got a big spot like that, but I think they have some a lot of leeway, a lot of backup to get that. Well, uh, you know, they're trying to make a, a good impression, um, trying to kick off this new league with some excitement, with some buzz. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure how this is going to do. Um, I really I'm don't. excited. My, wh- let's just listen. to. The, I'm going to he- let you – the names are my favorite. I love the team names. These are the, how many teams are there? Uh, eight. There are eight teams in the, the Alliance. Air, yes, of American football. Gotcha. The All Arizona right. Hotshots, which used to be my old basketball team Do they show team you name. what they look like with their color schemes at all? Yeah. You can check it well, out. Uh, check it out. You can go on AAF.com and check it out. Are they showing you the color schemes or just the logos? Uh, logos in color scheme. Okay, so what is the Arizona Hotshots? What what can we expect in their uniforms? Just to expect a lot of orange and red, or a lot orange and green. Orange so and like green. Mi- Miami, a little bit Miami look. So like a teal green, like a teal. No, pretty green. Like green, green. and orange. Yeah, interesting. And some yeah, that there's yellow in there too. So I'm not very, sure. Very very deserty. Yeah, yeah. Like very orange and red, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one of my favorites actually. That sounds disgusting. Green, orange, and red. It looks it looks better. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like Miami's colors. The Dolphins or, or no, the no, U. Hurricanes. The U. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I honestly like them personally. Um, I think it's a nice little uh, okay. Um, there was some other like um, like ideas for names and stuff which I thought were pretty good. But um, what I'll just go over their team names right now. Go ahead. My favorite one by far is the Atlanta Legends. That's my favorite team name. The Atlanta Legends. And it's an A with a crown. It's a crown with an A in it. I like it. It has the colors. It's purple and gold, so it's... Lakers. Uh, it's more It's more gold than yellow. Saints. Yeah, Saints colors mixed with Vikings colors. Gotcha. So, Which, like, if the Vikings, instead of their yellow, if they just had a, a gold? Yeah, the Saints gold, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so that's the Atlanta Legends. I like this. I like Birmingham getting a team. What are they called? The Iron. They're just the Birmingham Iron, and I love team names that don't end in S. That's unique to me. So, all right. So Birmingham, what is their colors? They're just silver and black. They're Raiders, basically. Okay, so basically Raider ish. Okay. Yeah. Um. Then we have the uh, San Diego Fleet. I like that name. I, I do like that name also. A, a little tip of the cap to the Navy. Um. Here, here are. I want to just show you the jerseys we have so far. Here are the hotshot jerseys. Just your reaction to it. You can check. They out. look like North Dakota State. They look like I'm watching yeah. Carson Wentz's highlight reel. You, you can check this on UniWatch.com as well. 
Um, here is also the uh, Legends, which I do like. Yeah. I like them. That gold is definitely like Saints gold. And um, the purple and is... it's a dark purple. It might even be darker than the Vikings. A little darker, but you can see yeah, the resemblance. Yeah, I can see it. Um, here are... I'm not a big fan, honestly. You're not a that. fan? Okay. Not, not those two so far? Mm -mm. No, I'm, not, I'm not digging it. All right. Well, okay. Is there, there another one? I'm trying to find the fleet. Here are the fleet. I think you'll like this one. It's it's more basic. The fleet look like uh, if the Chargers had their their navy and yellow look, like when the Chargers go with that. Like that's more silver. That's more gray, though. Yeah, it's a weird blue. It's not a true navy or a dark blue. I do like the logo, though. The fleet, it's, it's like a cargo it's ship. It's almost a black. It's a battleship. It is kind of a black. It's almost like if the Steelers and the Chargers had a baby. Yeah, I'm not sure if all the helmets will have just numbers on them. If they do, I love that. I've always loved numbers like on the helmets. the college look? Yeah, the Alabama look. Mm -hmm. And one of them has a really cool... Um, I'll let, me, let me read off the final names. Go ahead. Uh, so we have, so far what you said, the Hot Arizona Shots. Arizona Hot Shots, the Atlanta, Atlanta Legends. Legends the San Bur Diego Fleet, Birmingham Iron. Yes. And who else? we got four more. So what um, are the other four? We have the Memphis Express. The Memphis Express. That's a cool name. Yes, we do. Um, Memphis is where they have FedEx, like the fe the main FedEx hub of the United States, I believe. So that makes even more sense. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't even really Express think Express mail, you know. <laughs> I didn't even really think of that, to <laughs> be honest. Um, what else we got? We got the my one of my favorite. Like I love the hot shots, I love the legends, but I also love the Orlando Orlando Apollo. The Orlando Apollos. Yeah, I dig it. That's interesting. What do, what do they look like? Does it show you? Uh, it's it's basically the color of like NASA, if so you like will. So like blue and red. Bl oh, orangey. Uh oh wait, where are they? The middle, the middle one. Yeah, like a yellow and a. Dark blue. All right. What about a? Uh, I like that Salt Lake one. What's that? Uh, the Salt Lake Stallions. It's like a dark blue, light blue combo. And I've always been okay with the same it's color. Like, just it's different. like when North Carolina Tar Heels football team wears the dark blue and the North Carolina blue color. They have a uniform that's like that. Right. Yeah. Dark um, blue, dark blue, North Carolina blue combo. That's an interesting looking uniform or uh, color scheme. I, I think their uniforms is kind of Tennessee Titans ish, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what are the other? How many we got left? Uh, I think a couple more. We have the uh, San Antonio Commanders. Uh huh. And then we. What do they look? Oh, like? that was the last one. The San Diego Commanders are the last one. Uh, they're red and dark red. It's kind of like the same thing with the uh, stallions, but gotcha. with red. So we have. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and get them all. Tell me which ones I miss. Okay. San Diego Fleet. One. Arizona Hot Shots. Two. San San Antonio Commanders. Mm -hmm. uh, the Birmingham Iron. The Atlanta Legends. The Salt Lake. Oh God, Stallions. Mm -hmm. um, the Orlando Apollos. And the Memphis Express. That's all eight, right? I think so, yeah. I think you got them all. All right. And uh, so we sh I show you the hot shots and I show you the Is legends. Is there a team in like, the northern part of the um, country? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Is, Memphis? Is Memphis the highest north? I think so, if Salt I'm not mistaken. Um so for these next jerseys, this is the Birmingham jerseys. I think you'll like this. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically if the Browns wore black uniforms. Yeah, and it's, like it's Raider-ish. It's black and silver. But it has no logo, which I also dig. I always dig the no logo look. Just plain. It's just pure black helmet with a silver stripe on the top. Straightforward. I like, you know, simplicity is at its best, you know. I always thought simplistic is so the best So only two ones. of these spots are, are cities that have NFL teams that land in Arizona, right? Yes, which is smart. In but my opinion. does Arizona, where are they playing? Are they playing at? They're playing at Sun Devil Stadium. So they're playing in Arizona State, not Correct. in Phoenix, right? Correct. Arizona State's in Tucson? Arizona State is in uh, Tempe. Tempe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Air, University of Arizona is in Tucson. So how far is Tempe from Phoenix? Um... I think an hour and a half, two hours. So it's a little bit different. It'd be like maybe be even like, more. I know Tucson's about it'd two hours. It'd be like hours. the difference of like Sacramento to San Francisco. Roughly, yeah. Okay. So um, a little bit different mm, of mm, local, mm, like you mm, know, different and, different uh, fans will get to mm, go to those games. And, most and here's the Memphis Express jerseys. They're red and blue. Um, favorite color combination. Kind of Patriots ish. 
Yeah, but a lot more red and a uh, better color blue. In it's my more opinion. of a half and half red and blue rather than yeah. like and one the dominant. helmets and the helmets are like all mainly dominant red, but they have the blue little back of the helmets thing, kind of like right. the Jaguars, but better. Not all half of the helmet. So, what team is the favorite? Um, gosh, I should look that up because I honestly don't really know a lot about this. I, I know think. that Josh Johnson was the number one pick, and that was the uh, and he's San not, Diego. He is not playing because he's staying in Washington. Is that real? That is dead real. Wow. Uh, here are the Apollos jerseys. They have the numbers on the back of the helmets, which I think is pretty cool. I like that it, idea. Why does it look like the helmet's darker than the uniform? Because it probably is. You know the Rams helmet. I mean, that's a cool logo. I like the logo. The, I'm just not sold on the colors. Well, the Rams, the Rams helmet has that thing where it's the dark blue, really dark blue. Well, the Rams just are wearing weird uniforms right now. They got to mm-hmm. change that up, right? And this is the your Stallions look. I think you might like this because it's also slim, simplistic. Yeah, I like the Stallions uniforms. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming all the teams have one color right now because there's not enough teams where they need to have more than one uniform. Yeah, it sounds like they only have one certain jersey. I mean, there's... Okay, I really like the Stallion or the uh, Commander's helmet, San Antonio, because they have the mission on the back of the helmet. They have a mis- the outline of the mission on the back of their helmets. I think that's really cool. Interesting color combo, though, with the maroon and then like the more of a true red. Mm-hmm. It's like a yes. dark red on sitting on top of a mm-hmm. normal red, I'd say true red i will look up the favorites for the uh well if san diego are the number one pick and they pick josh johnson and he's not playing then that gives them a disadvantage yeah. right yes um so the this league is interesting though because they are they are branding themselves as a developmental league they're they are branding themselves as not a direct competitor to the nfl obviously they're playing in a different time of year which makes a lot of sense for their ratings for them to grow. But also, I mean, they are undoubtedly a developmental league. Like the Uh goal of these players is to catch the eye of an NFL team. Like that's the purpose. Uh, You know, Vegas actually has a, um, they have win totals. huh? They have win totals. You want to hear them? Yeah. Who's the favorite? Uh, the most wins I see at the moment go to the hot shots actually with six and a half. Those hot shots, man. Put get 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 your money out. Six and a half wins. So how many games do they play? Uh, they play everybody twice or what? That's a good question. There's seven teams that you can play because there's eight in the league. So seven teams that you could play once. Uh, if you played everybody. I twice. believe it's an eleven week season. Six and a half. I'm just wondering what that means. I it, yeah, that's the over under. Um. <coughs> oh, each eight teams play ten games. Eat with the top two teams in each division advancing to the playoffs. So everybody plays eight games. Yes. So you play one. No, team each t- eight teams play ten games. So everyone. Has oh, 10 everybody games. plays ten games. So you yes. play a couple teams twice. Not everybody. Mm-hmm. Is there two divisions? How does this break? I'm. Out? There's separate divisions. I'm trying to figure. Probably out. at east and a west. I'd assume like San Diego, Arizona, Salt Lake. San Antonio is one, and then the other With, one would be the, the other It's the two four. top teams in each division advance to the playoffs. Since there's only eight, I'm assuming it's two divisions, and the two top teams go to the, the playoffs, so it's right. going to be four teams in the playoffs. So logically, it would be Arizona, San Diego, Salt Lake, San Antonio, and the other side would be Memphis, Orlando, Atlanta, and Birmingham. That sounds like it would make sense. It's, uh, I'm not actually sure how the divisions work. I'll look that up too. There's a lot of unanswered questions because who we, are the notable players playing in this league for, that uh, fans might recognize from the NFL? I know you uh, said Christian Hackenberg was a quarterback that's playing in this league. Yes, um, Trent Richardson is probably the biggest one to me. Trent Richardson, okay. Yeah. Uh, what about Matt Sims? He's in there. How about Matt? Don't call me oh, Carne there's an, there, there is an Eastern Conference and a Western Conference. Mm-hmm. So basically what you're saying, Arizona, Salt Lake, San Antonio, and San Diego, and then Atlanta, Birmingham, Memphis, Orlando. So you were right. Have you seen – so I think most of the big names in this league, because we got Christian Hackenberg, Matt Sims, Aaron Murray, Trent Richardson, Matt Asiata, Bishop Sankey, Denard Robinson. A lot of people might remember him from Michigan days. Um 
Sterling Moore is a defensive back who's played in the NFL. I, I recognize that name. But a lot of the names, the big names, are the coaches. Mike Singletary is one of the head coaches. So is Dennis Erickson. Steve Sp- or some- Spurrier. Steve Spurrier. Is so also a coach. Dennis Erickson is a coach of Salt Lake. Spurrier oh, Orlando. He is. Mike Martz coach. is a coach of San Diego. Mike Singletary is a coach of Memphis. And Mike Riley is the coach of San Antonio. And a lot of those guys have NFL coaching experience. Or all of them. No kickoffs. That's going to be into though. There goes the kickers. So the ball starts on the 25. After each score or at the start of the game. Okay. They're trying to make this game go by as basically quickly as possible from what I've figured. Um, and you, you already said Christian Hackenberg is notable. He's going to be on Memphis. Um, Birmingham has Trent Richardson. Those are the two that I'm going to be looking at more. So what do they the do? What does the team do? If there they is a 35 second play clock, which is five seconds shorter than the 40. The NFL. What has. if a team wants to? What if they're losing? They need an onside kick. What What do they do instead? I have no onside kicks. But, I have the answer. But onside conversion. If a team is trailing by 17 points, or there's five minutes, or le- so any at any point, if you're trailing by 17, you can do this. Or if there's five minutes or less in the fourth quarter. A team can attempt an outside conversion. Instead of kicking it, they will get the ball on their own 28-yard line, and they have to convert a, convert a fourth and 12. So if they convert the fourth and 12, they keep the they ball. keep the ball. If they don't, they turn it over from that point, and the opponent. I takes like the ball. that. Uh, defenses, so a team goes for two every time. Very important. Defenses can't rush more than five players on pass plays, so you can't do your classic all-out blitzes. Mm-hmm. Which is actually... So overtime rules are kind of like college, but they start at the 10-yard line, and you have four downs to score. So yeah. you're at the 10. It's already first and goal. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And do you know the first games of the season? I don't, but I know it's tomorrow. It's on CBS, February right? Or is it NBC? Is it CBS? CBS? Both are at 8 p.m. on CBS. Is that 5 p.m. Pacific time? Um... Probably. Uh, probably, if I had to make a guess. And uh, there's also games on Sunday, too, for those who are wondering. The first game is Atlanta versus Orlando and San Diego versus San Antonio. All right. Will you be tuning in? Oh, absolutely. I'm just – I'm curious in so many ways. I am interested. I think this league has a better chance than the XFL does because the XFL is marketing itself as a direct competitor to the NFL, and it starts next year. I think the this league here, the Alliance of American Football, has a chance to be like the, a minor league system and something for NFL fans to watch when the NFL season is over. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it's always it's always nice to see like that story of like the kid who I don't know didn't get a shot by an NFL team, kills it, and then he ends up getting a chance to go to the yeah. NFL. You Honestly, know? in the next couple of years, I can see this as like the people who are drafted play in this league before they go to the NFL. Interesting. Like, can't you see that as a possibility too? Like, well, if if it's its own separate league, then the NFL I don't think is going to send any of the it, young it talent over there. It seems to me like there. this is going to like this, maybe like undrafted players. It, well, I've seen a lot of things based off like NFL Network and stuff like that be a part of like covering this even. So I mean, this might be partnerships with the NFL sooner rather than later. This might be a future partnership. And why yeah. wouldn't it be? This is a good. This is a good investment if you're at the NFL, in my opinion. Having a developmental league, I think that would help out in the long run. I found this interesting. Um, former NFL players, if they're not in the NFL, their rights were given to the team closest to their NFL team. So, for example, if you played for the Cowboys and then you didn't make their team, you'd be assigned to the San Antonio team if you wanted to play in this league. To kind of keep like, um, but then you players need like, in mind. then you need like all thirty. You need thirty two teams. It's theory. like closest. It's just like, mm-hmm. it's loosely based, right? Like you don't want to release them, but you don't want them on your practice squad, so you want them in another. I see what you're saying. That would probably be the best. Mm-hmm. But um, we should probably take a break, uh, and then yeah. when we come back from the break, we'll talk about Patrick Mahomes and him not being able to have fun in the off season anymore we'll talk about the top prospects entering the combine if it's smart if it's dumb we'll break them down uh the notable players we'll also talk about a monday morning quarterback article 
about the next five years in the NFL. There's a couple questions that some writers answered of what they see in the next five years from teams. We in the will NFL. laugh at one particular one. We'll get on that later. But first, I want to talk to you about investing because when investing and planning for your retirement, it's always best to get advice from the experts. Best selling author Harry Dent, America's number one economist, says the dark window is open. There's an opportunity to rapidly boost your retirement savings for the greatest stock market crash in American history. But it won't but this dark window won't be open for long. You can make up to ten times the annual average stock market gain in just a few short months. Find out more by going to www.harrydentforecast.com. There's a very short time to take advantage of this dark window. So once again, you want to take advantage, go to www.harrydentforecast.com to learn more. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. interested in the uh, AAF tomorrow. Well, does it make sense to call it the AAF or the Alliance of American Football? Which one just rolls off the tongue better, you think? Uh, AAFL. It's just called the AAF, though. Yeah. But you think AAFL sounds better? Just <laughs> L at the end of it sounds better? It just is weird to say AAF. Like, AAF. Mm -hmm. AAFL, like, it sounds more resolute. You know, like, there's a period makes sense uh anyways welcome back everybody uh we just finished talking about the aaf of america football america north america anyways football, man. football is back you guys thought it was done it's back mm, to be determined it's back man to be determined all right and so. anyways, we are going to talk more about football, but more about the NFL MVP and Patrick Mahomes. You want to talk about him? All right, let's do it. Uh, after the video released of Mahomes playing basketball, his agent told him what his contract prohibits him from doing. Do you want me to read off what he can't do? Yes, please let us know. Okay. What, what, so he got in trouble for what? We're gonna, uh, for uh, the video of him playing basketball yeah. and like a wreck. Like it, it, didn't, it even seemed that harmful, full, but whatever. He's but, at a gym, yeah. balling it up. Here, I'm going to just read them off slowly, and you just react to them. Water and snow skiing. That one makes sense to me. Uh -huh. That's an extreme sport, quote-unquote. Jet skiing. That one makes sense because that can be dangerous. Right, right. Surfing. Nobody wants to see their quarterback get eaten by a shark. Sure. Is that the only reason you can get? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Hand gliding. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's we're not little... supposed to go in the ocean, by okay. the way, like humans. Like, we're not supposed to go there. Well, people are obviously ignoring you. Uh, I know, but, like, that's their territory, not ours. Whatever. Like, we are not built for that. They are, don't. They technically don't really go after humans. They go after, like, seals and stuff, but they've mistaken us for other animals. Yeah, I'm good, man. Anyways, uh, you're afraid of sharks, aren't you? Sharks are probably the scariest thing on this planet because they're in the ocean. We can't swim as well as, like, anything oh, that's yeah, in the ocean. Yeah, it's terrifying. They're super but fast. You ever seen Deep Blue Sea? Oh, that movie's that's a, that's a genetically <laughs> superior. That's a monster shark. That's like a fake. That's Only a, because they're like people seeking, but like they're they move <laughs> like that. You mean though. when the shark jumps out of the water and bites the guy's arm off? That happens. Right, right. I mean that's over the top. But what I'm saying is sharks Remember, are oh, huge. Oh, the Samuel L. Jackson death was the best. Sharks. We're gonna seal off this boat. Shark jumps out of the water onto land, eats Samuel L. Jackson. Poor Samuel. L. And uh, 
That was probably the most shocking death of so, that movie. So, anyways, no surfing. What's next? Hand gliding. Makes sense. Okay, what That's, else? Uh, bungee jumping. Mm-hmm. Okay. Skydiving. Sure. Makes sense. Scuba diving. Again, that's sharks. Like that, that, that's the again, shark. sharks. But again, it's almost like a harmless thing. In the <laughs> they theory. should just say nothing that has to do with sharks. Yeah, but scuba diving is not that. I'm scuba diving it. Divin. You've divin. I I've been scuba diving before. It's not that bad. Scuba diving. It just you don't go very very far down. It's very straightforward. Anyway, it depends where you scuba dive. So does that mean you can't snorkel? I mean, no, you can. I don't know, man. Anyways. What else? Um, rock and mountain climbing. I get okay. it. That one makes sense. Boxing. Get it. Basketball. Mm, still hesitant because Anyways. it depends on how you do it. Race car driving. Right. And this one just is just, just riding a motorcycle. You right. can't own a motorcycle, nope. apparently. Cannot. Absolutely not. Okay. Not that, for my star quarterback. Whatever. Uh, motorbike. Just says motorbike. Isn't that the same as motorcycle? Uh, no, because it's like the um, uh, what do you call it? Like a dirt bike. Okay. Like you, you, you it just, they don't want them on a dirt street bike street or got it. Yeah. Here's the one that I do not understand: use of firearms. Why not? I'm kidding. First of all, that is stating the obvious. Is that really on there? Use of firearms. Yes. Interesting. It's in his contract. Because, you know, some players have, you know, shot themselves in the leg before. Let's go, Burris. Um, yes. What about fireworks? <laughs> there's nothing about fireworks. The Jason there's, Pierre Paul rule? <laughs> oh, that's mean. Sorry. And there's one more. Lobo, Lobo. You want to guess what the last one is? You're not going to guess yes, it. Yes, I'll guess it. Okay. Um, extreme cooking. <laughs> Was that a legit guess? So when you guess? cook with hot oils. Uh, no. no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, like um, j- cliff jumping. No. That's, that's not on there? Nope. It's same as bungee jumping. And, like, I would put that in the same category. Or okay. rock and mountain climbing. I'll give you a hint. Oh, no wrestling. No professional wrestling. What about amateur wrestling? It says nothing about that. So I'm pretty sure that's even worse. <laughs> Nobody uh, wants to see Mahomes in backyard I, wrestling through tables. That's I feel like professional wrestling has more extreme things to happen than amateur wrestling. But they probably have per- better professionals and people train that won't hurt you rather than oh, at 100 percent rather than Billy Bob and Jim in the backyard. But you know? I, I think it's more like there was actually an incident this happened because Adam Pacman Jones when he was suspended during his arrest back in 2007, he went to a professional wrestling company. And the NFL said you were not allowed to get in, get in any physical wrestling ability with any wrestler. And uh, they almost, like, put a restraining order on him from the company so he wouldn't even get it, an opportunity to do that. But they removed that before, like, a, his a first appearance in this wrestling company. And during his time in this wrestling company, he was actually a tag team champion and did nothing. He sat on the apron, got tagged in, and pinned a guy. That's nice. what he did. So uh, that's basically all he did in his wrestling career. But actually, his only altercation he ever had was during a – he came back like four, five, six years later, like 2014 or wherever it was, and he body slammed someone. That was hmm. it. Huh. So, yeah. Um, professional wrestling is a big no-no in the NFL based off of just, uh, so what do you it's, say? It's mainly like extreme, like tables and ladders. What's your and opinion chairs. on these rules? I understand most of them. They're stating mostly, especially the use of firearms, because that's just stating the obvious, but not letting him play like basketball or, or like scuba diving. Those ones seem a little extreme to me just based off like. What do you do? You just want them to sit at home doing like it sounds like they like they're also he- it feels like they're hesitant to like to exercise. Oh, they can exercise, but they can hurt themselves exercising. They just, just don't much. want them doing stuff where somebody may injure them more than anything. Like somebody might, I don't know, undercut them at a basketball game. He goes up for a dunk. You know, we've seen basketball players get injured, um, especially people messing around. But I mean, I understand most of these. I, I'm with you. I know that you're. You're not feeling the basketball part, and I get it. It, it is – I think it's mostly they don't want him joining like a 
like a recreational league where there's a bunch that, of bunch of just, guys that are out of shape running into I, each other. I, I understand that part, but can you just like dribble around and play, hang out, and just shoot around? Like, why? So I feel like he's not allowed to do that either when it comes down to it. Based off this contract, based when it says basketball, it's very broad, as in maybe just not basketball. Period. Mm-hmm. But no baseball. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they don't care about him shooting hoops in the backyard. It's him with ten other amateur sport or athletes that you know, weekend warriors that you know might, you know, oh, I'm playing against Patrick Mahomes right now. I'm going to show him. Oh, sorry, I accidentally elbowed him in the face. You know, but not because it's like intentional, but just because like Clumsy. you don't know. Yeah, it's just. And let's be honest, man. He's a quarterback, Jeff. We all know they got different roles, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, you can't touch quarterback, right? What happens if you touch quarterback in the NFL? 15 yards. Yeah. <laughs> that happens in reality. They arrest you and you have to go back 15 yards. I, I, bet, you... I bet you the Chiefs don't have the same rules for Travis Kelsey. I bet he mm-hmm. could play basketball. <laughs> true. Tyreek Hill. Who knows? Yeah. Um. All right. So let's talk about... Uh, the top prospects entering the combine. What is your take? Are you surprised at every single one of these top? I haven't seen a top guy yet. Well, when I say top guy, I mean like a, a top 10 pick, like somebody who's predicted to be in the top 10. I haven't seen anybody say they're not going. Kind of surprising. Usually there's one or two players that say no. A lot of times a quarterback. Are you surprised? Um, Not really. I understand why there's multiple reasons. So it's not just like avoid any confrontation. Like, or I understand why you would not and why you would, but it it, it it's up to the guy. It's all up to the. It's the decision of the one man. You know. Do you think it's smart for a guy like Bosa to go to the combine? Well, I said he was going to go to prove that his injury is fine, just to test out it, test it out, see if he's one hundred percent healthy. What was the injury? Wasn't it like an abdominal uh, tear? I, I think it was, it was an elbow. Um, I could be completely wrong, but I, I thought think it was it an abdominal. Was it abdominal? I thought it was an elbow. It was like a core injury. Um, was it a core injury? Yeah, core muscle injury sustained. He had, it was such a long time ago. He had it's surgery hard to, on it. It's hard to remember right off the bat what it was. But like again, like that's a serious thing to look at. Like if he can't like run at the moment, like if he can't do like a jog. That would worry me. Well, usually a lot of times they'll do the pro day, right? Like where, yeah, they, get, yeah, yeah. where they control the what they show, but they control this, the this, atmosphere. This feels like different because every team can look at them and every team can, like, you know, I think it's different. Combine and pro day are two different things. But I just think this is just more of a proving he can be the number one pick type of thing. And if he has a slightly poor shuttle run, then he drops to what? 17 no I'm kidding I um, mean it's po- it's not entirely out of the question if you have a bad performance at the combine in one drill it can really hurt your stock oh absolutely I I know you were saying that like facetiously but like it's not out of the realm of possibility that he could bomb the combine you know like we don't we don't really know we don't expect him to but any of these guys could yeah uh, I'm, I'm saying maybe abs- Josh Allen runs a 40 and four six and you're like ooh, I thought he was a four or five I thought he was a four four nine what if uh, Kyler Murray runs a four seven? Ooh, third round pick. Ah, uh, four seven and five eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, he's, he's so no, dependent no, no. on oh, his wait, speed. Four right? seven. His speed or his height? Ah, nice joke. See what I did there? Nice. Bum bum. Ch- nice. I'll be here all week. Nice. You think you could follow up with another joke by the end of this show? Um, like a, but one is good, not like a not one that bombs. You know. Like more material, so unlike the Maybe, Chiefs well, season, unlike the what the Chiefs season, how what their season bombed? Is that what you're saying? Because they didn't make the Super Bowl. Yeah. All right. Was yeah. that was that two offsides? Was that like five uh, yards offsides on that one? Oh, oh, man. Almost. Oh, you're getting there. I don't yeah, know. I like that one. D Ford. Sorry, man, but it's a D Ford. That guy. honestly, like I. That really, like, when he, now he's a free agent, I feel like that's going to be a big factor in his, wouldn't you think so? No. You don't think so? That's going to be like. He got like 14 sacks. I think he'll get handsomely rewarded. Yeah, but that that was still a major flaw. Oh, it was. It'll it'll be something that a lot of of Chiefs fans, I I didn't, I didn't tell you this, but. um, Tell me. At my parents' uh, Super Bowl party, 
that I go to every year. Okay. I have, there's one member in our family. Well, he's like extended family. He's married to somebody in our family, but. Oh, he's the, it's, no one likes him? No, he's awesome. He's oh, okay. hilarious. You'll tell, me, he's tell me, you'll Chiefs tell me fan. off the air. He's a huge Chiefs fan. Okay. Is he from Kansas City, Missouri? No, he, he's actually from this area, but why is he, he just fan? grew up a Chiefs fan. I have no Was idea. Was his family a Chiefs fan? I, I don't he know. He needs a real reason. He I can't don't... just be a bandwagon. All right. So anyways. Back to what's important here. No, is he a bandwagon or not? And he was walking around in his Chiefs gear on Super Bowl Sunday, and he was like, nope, we lost. It's all our fault. D Ford offsides. He kept saying D Ford is offsides. It's all his fault. And I, and I just thought that was pretty funny because what we was he a about. Chiefs fan before this season? Yes, he's been a Chiefs fan for as long as I've known, which is like twenty years. Okay, then he's it's fine. gone through all the crap. Trust me. Okay, if he's gone through it all, then it's fine. And uh, he, he definitely hates all the Raider fans that we know. So, <laughs> well, I mean, they are in the same division. Yep, big rivals. I mean, Niner fans hate Seahawk fans, and vice versa. Oh, yeah. And or it's like, uh, well, does Cardinal fans really hate Rams fans? And, eh, I the feel only, like the only real rivalry in the NFC West, I believe, is the Niners in Seattle. Like, yeah, you, yeah, you, the you, other you, ones you, have you a rivalry. Say Niners and Rams are getting up. Niners there, and Rams because they're the longest rivalry. But it, yeah, it's gonna heat up. Cardinals, eh. yeah, the NFC West doesn't have the best rivalries. Let's be honest. Well, I get. Well, actually, the first game of the hundredth NFL season is gonna be Bears and Packers, the longest rivalry. There you go. That's that's the uh, that's that's, a that's the best that's the best two teams to have play in the first in the first game of the hundredth season of the yeah. NFL no question two two uh, very historical teams absolutely yeah both both one team is playoff bound or playoff hopefuls the other one is the Green Bay Packers oh there you go that's a good joke I like that, that wasn't one. even a joke that was I know but I see what of- you did there. Like, it was a zinger, you know? Mm-hmm. They're just a statement of fact. Sorry, Packers fans. You're in the gutters at the moment. Sorry. Anyways. Was uh, it nice to have that one Super Bowl in 2010? I'm sure it was. We are, <laughs> need to go to a break. You're you're on fire right now, huh? Uh, we need to go to a break. When we come I'm back. I'm not even trying to make jokes. We'll talk about that Monday morning quarterback article about the next five years. We'll talk about Cam Newton. We'll talk about Bob Stoops and his return. And we'll tell you where he's going. But before that, when it's investing. It's not what you think. When investing and planning for your retirement, it's always best to get advice from the experts. Best-selling author Harry Dent, America's number one economist, says the dark window is open. There is an opportunity to rapidly boost your retirement savings before the greatest stock market crash in American history. But this dark window won't be open for long. You can make 10 times the annual average stock market gain in just a few short months. According to the research of renowned Harvard economist Harry Dent, though, this window could slam shut later this year, and nobody on Wall Street is expecting it. This dark window is something bigger by far than anything he's predicted up to this point, and you can make 10 times the annual average stock market gain. Find out more by going to www.harrydentforecast.com. There's a very short time to take advantage of this dark window, so go to www.harrydentforecast.com to learn more. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC. SMCpodcast.com for more info. For joining us, everybody, and welcome to the GSM. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Just finished talking about Patrick Mahomes and uh, the AAF, the Alliance of American Football, and um, 
My gosh, what else? Patrick oh, Combine. Mahomes and his. Uh, well, I already said that. Uh, yeah, Mahomes. Combine. No fun, Mahomes. Uh, what was our last thing? We talked about. Uh, we talked about all kinds of, uh, the prospects. We talked about the top prospects are going to the combine if it's smart and all that. So, um, let's talk about that Monday morning quarterback article that you were talking about before the show. Yes, and the MMQB. And I believe, if I remember it correctly, while you pulled up, it was about the next five years predictions by some oh, writers. Oh, yeah. Journalists, I think it was. Writers. Yes. Um, should I name their names? Because some of these are kind of silly. The, the predictions, at least. No, well, no. You know what? It doesn't even matter. What were the questions? And we'll answer them. We don't even care what they say. What was the que- What was the first question? Wasn't it like who, who will win the Super Bowl? Like what teams will win the Super Bowl in the next five years? Yes. Okay. So starting this year, coming up, 2019, 2020 season, and then the next four years following, what teams do you think – We'll Us first, and then yeah. we go. Okay. No, we don't even care what they say. They say a bunch of dumb stuff, in my opinion. Well, we should read what one of these guys says. Because that's the, funny. One, the one at the end is funny. Yes, we'll read that one. But who do you think? Chiefs are popular. Colts are popular. You see one of those teams winning multiple, maybe one, maybe none at all. The Rams got to be popular. Honestly, if I'm going to make a guess right now, the Rams are not winning one Super Bowl in the next five years. Okay. I'm going on that limb. Because they only have a few years left of certain contracts, and once those are done, like next after, even before this, even not just this year, but next year, they lose a lot of other contracts. Three years from now, they might be in the gutter. All right. So, but so what's your? Uh, what's I your will prediction? say one championship in the next five years will go to Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes, just how this? If this team stays the way it is right now for the next two or three years, they will win a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Because they can only get better from adding if they get D four. I got back. the Chiefs winning one as well. They can, if they can easily get D four back, he wants to come back, and they can easily get better defensive guys in the draft and free agency and all that good stuff. And they can up their defense, which they need help in, and they can add a running back and replace a Cream Hunt. This team can win a Super Bowl. All right, so I got the Chiefs winning one as well. Who else you got? Um, Colts. I was thinking the Colts. But I can see them in multiple AFC title games just being short. I got the Colts winning two. Two? Because they have a young team. Two. And I think they're the most well-rounded young team right now. And they have potential. They have so much money to spend. It's actually, they could go crazy the next two off seasons and just bolster this team like we've never seen. Uh, they have a real opportunity here. So I'm going to say they they do the right thing. Uh, they ha- they make smart decisions, and Andrew Luck stays healthy. And if that happens, I got them winning two in the next five years. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I have them going to multiple AFC title games, and I do see him winning one. All right. So who else? Getting over the hump. Um, this has been a tough thing to think about, and I hate to say it, but the Patriots. Okay. I see him winning one more. I don't see the Patriots winning another Super Bowl. We've said this before, and we have I've ne- I haven't mouth. said this before, but I am saying it now. Well, you're going to have your fun mouth just like everybody else. I'll tell you who I think is going to win a Super Bowl next year. Next year? The okay. Saints. The Saints are going to win the Super Bowl next year. Then it'll be the Chiefs. No, then it'll be the Colts, then the Chiefs, and the Colts. So you're saying the Colts will win a Super Bowl before the Chiefs do? And then the Chiefs, and then the Colts. Okay. Uh, so I have the Patriots, the Colts, and the Chiefs all winning one Super Bowl. I will. I'm hesitant to add the Saints because we don't know Drew Brees' future as of right. I know he probably is most likely one, well, probably 100 percent playing next season, but we don't know after that. We really don't know if he might even retire this year. For all we know, who's that? Drew Brees. Nah, man, he's coming back. Well, I mean, one more time. You think one more season? He's got one more season in him. Got one more. We'll see what he does. It's still to be determined. We haven't heard anything from him. He probably is going to come back next season. But again, this is all speculation. So who else you got? You know, I, I, because I only got one left. I only got one Super Bowl left. I have two more left. Well, what's your last one? My last one. Mm. Man, this is a tough one. Because I have the Bears winning one of mine. You have the Bears? Mm-hmm. How that defense is. 
And without that missed field goal, they're probably in the divisional round, and who knows how far they go from there. But I see the Bears winning with Khalil Mack on the helmet defense. I can see this team winning a Super Bowl. How good they played this year, which is one guy in addition, and you can add more guys in free agency and more guys in the draft. This team can win a Super Bowl. I am going to say... Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, the Raiders? Las Vegas Raiders? No. The, the, the San Antonio Buccaneers? That's one of the uh, other... That's the I'm going to say Monday the Atlanta guys. Falcons. No. I disagree. No way. No. No. Okay. No. Well, it won't be their the, current team. Yeah. That has to be at the end of the five years if that's mm-hmm. going to happen. But I just don't see that. Okay. No. But I will say, um, see, now I'm in a tight bond, too, because I have one more Super Bowl left. I picked the Bears, Chiefs. I don't see any repeats. Bears, Chiefs, Patriots, uh, Colts, and who was my other team? Um, the No, I said Bears. I said Chiefs. I said Colts. I said Patriots. I said Bears. Is that mm-hmm. four? Yeah. Oh, so that's all of them. Okay, so I'm missing one. And if any I, of them going to win again? I don't see any repeats. But, see, this is where I'm at a tight bond. Because we have not seen a repeat since the Patriots did it 4 5 Right. But, yeah, but we, we did see the Patriots win every other year recently. But, you know... This is a tough one to think. I'm reading some. I'm reading these as I'm talking, and I saw one say Steelers and Raiders, and I just started laughing. <laughs> but do you know who we really are not looking at? Who the, actually have a shot, in my opinion? Who the Browns? I can't believe I'm about to say that, but the Very Cleveland true. the Cleveland Browns have a real shot. I say no because it's the Browns. They'll figure a way to mess this up. But with the team right now and getting adding more talent, if they if they do free agency right, if they do drafting right, this team can win a Super Bowl with the talent it has right now, plus a few more additions. Mm-hmm. I think Baker Mayfield can do it. I really do. Yeah, no, I I won't disagree with that. I just it's not him that I worry about. It's it's, it's management. Oh, I that's my hesitant of that as well, no question. Yeah, but this team is so talented, they might have to be able to get through it. We'll see how their new head coach does. We'll see how everything else works out. But this team has what it takes to win a Super Bowl. I truly believe that. Mm-hmm. And you want to list? Want to hear the other uh, the uh, the uh, Monday morning? People Monday morning quarterback, yeah, yeah. So one of them I saw has like uh, I it was basically a joke, but it was like, hey, what? Why can't we think of teams that are moving be a team? And so one of them was the San Antonio Buccaneers. Someone predicts the Buccaneers will move to San Antonio and win a Super Bowl. Yeah, okay. The San Antonio Buccaneers. Uh, in, all honesty, in all honesty, they changed the name, wouldn't they? Maybe. Because the Buccaneers, some, like... Well, I mean, the Chargers didn't. Yeah, but, like, that's like that's not regional-based. True, like, true. the Buccaneers, the Ocean, you know, yeah. Pirates. Um, But if, if a San team... Antonio, what's the San Antonio uh, AAF? Commanders. Commanders. So probably, like, something military. Like the, mm-hmm. um, But if I had to make a guess of a team that moves in the next five years, if one team would move in the next five years, the Other Buccaneers... the Raiders, because that'd be cheating. Yeah, that's that's. I, I meant like a legit move. <laughs> the re- Bucks. Yeah, the Bucks would be one of them. I one of the Florida teams definitely, not Miami, but Jacksonville or Tampa Bay. I'd the say. Is, the, what, like, what, I'd say so, the Chargers. Let, let me ask you. The Chargers. The really Chargers move again? Yeah, because it, it has a chance to really go south in L.A. You know. Well, supposedly they're stuck there for the next twenty years. Yeah, they sound like a lease, huh? Well, the yeah. thing is, though, is that. Like that, the I don't, NFL. I feel like could rebut the re can, exactly the NFL. If that. the owners are like, dude, you're not making us money, we have a better chance. They would just stop that and yeah. right away. They'd pay whatever fee they had to do and get out yeah, of that. Yeah, and uh, uh, obviously they would change their team name. I'm hoping, maybe not. I don't know, but I I understand why the Raiders aren't changing their name because the Raiders is a household name. Like you can't change that name, but you can change the Buccaneers. 
You can change sure. the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can change probably the Chargers in theory, but maybe not. That one's a difficult one. Maybe Buffalo will move. No, their 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 owner is a Buffalo native. Yeah, so they did. Didn't they just sell the team recently? They sold it to a for a Buffalo billionaire. A Buffalo billionaire. A, a guy that well, a billionaire that says he wants to. I keep see them. the pun that you did though. Yeah. A, a billionaire that wants to keep them in Buffalo because he also owns the Buffalo Sabres. What and they if? were They were in the risk of moving out of the NHL in the NHL. What if but, this whole time okay. Bills is short for billionaires? Sure. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, the owner said he's not moving them because he bought them so they wouldn't move. Both the Sabres of the NHL and the Bills of the NFL. So they're not going anywhere. Now your whole perspective has changed. Now you're going to see them as bu- you're going to see money signs of Buffalo billionaires. Should we just have dollar stacks as their logo now? They change their color to green. No, keep it blue. I love their jerseys. Yeah, and but they're the billionaires, dude. No, I don't care. I love their jerseys. They change their logo to the, they have, to the money they have, sign. They have my favorite color scheme. It's a I love their color blue and I love their color red and I love their white helmets. It's perfect. All right. Uh, Bob Stoops is coaching the Dallas XFL team that's introducing in 2020. What, what do you think about that? What a weird signing, right? I did not know he like he was even going to uh, – old, old, the old Oklahoma head coach is now going to coach the XFL Dallas team. Yeah. But we don't even know what that Dallas team is going to be called. Yeah, we don't. The Stampeders? That is a SCFL team. Mm-hmm. Calgary. You, I'm pretty sure you're, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. Uh, the um, what the Eskimos? The Dallas. That's a team name. The also. Dallas Rodeo. Uh, you like team names that don't end in S? Dallas Rodeo. That's sick. Yeah, that would work. But the, the actual name Rodeo does not make sense for a team. What do you mean? It's like a party, you know? Yeah, but that's not. That's kind of fearful. What mascot would that be? A clown? Uh, no. Yeah, kind of. Well, no, just like a bucking bronco, like a cowboy. On I the would back. say like the Dallas. Uh, let's see, what's the Dallas? Well, Cowboys, um, like the Dallas Outlaws or something like that. Well, the Las Vegas Pool Party. The Las Vegas uh, Roofies. Dang. Ouch. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, that's. Uh, have you seen The Hangover? The movie. Yeah. I thought you were talking about. Uh, this weekend, sorry. Um, yes. Remember they got roofied? Yes. So? It, it's happened. I'm sure it has. It has the it's... Las Vegas Gamblers. Ooh. ooh. I, I actually dig that. The Las Vegas Sharks is what I like, though. Why the Sharks? Because, like, a like a gambling shark. Like a, like a you know, somebody... A lone shark, you mean? Somebody who's really good at poker. That's... A... That's a, the sharks. That's a cheater. You're thinking of a loan shark. No, no. I'm thinking of somebody. No, it's not a cheater. It's just somebody who's picking people off one by one. Okay. Um. How about the Vegas counters? Like they count cards. No, that's cheating. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> should we call it? Should we call the Patriots the counters? Um. Get it. The Las Vegas roulettes. Ooh, well, I kind of like that. Um, there, there's not a team in Vegas in the XFL, unfortunately, because the teams are actually in Seattle, L.A., Dallas, Houston, uh, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, for oddly reasons, Washington D.C. and New York. Tampa Bay Obviously, is the one they're that, trying to compete with the against the NFL. But Tampa Bay makes zero sense. They can't even hold up an NFL team. Mm-hmm. Like Nashville would be okay, or like. I don't know. Let's just go Salt Lake City, you know, or uh, mm-hmm. I I can't think of like Philadelphia maybe would work. Not Tampa Bay. No offense to people that live in Tampa Bay, but come on. You don't need a second NFL team or a, a football team, professional football team. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, I think that's our show for today. Join us Monday. We'll, re- we'll recap the AAF action and see Will who we? is the early season favorite for super for I don't know what they call their game the championship. Uh, it's not the, the superb a- owl. The AA <laughs> we're calling it the superb owl for until we know the actual name of it. The, so we're how about, it what the, if it was called like instead of the Super Bowl? It was like the, bowl the super? awesome bowl. No bowl super. <laughs> just, just just move the name. The around. AAF should troll the NFL and call it the awesome bowl. Come on, like that's. 
No, the Super Duper Bowl. Just up, up, <laughs> just outdo it by one extra name. The the better than Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, the, super the slightly du- better than Super Bowl. No, no, the Superdome. You put a bunch of S's. Gotcha. Every time there's a new one, you add another S. So it's like Super Bowl 50. Uh. Yeah, you know. But anyways. We will actually look up. I think it's just the AAF championship mm-hmm. as of right now. Hopefully, they make give an option. We, we should. We should. They should listen to the show and just call it the awesome or the uh, super duper bowl. <gasps> the awesome super duper bowl. Just name full name. Awesome super duper bowl. The ASD bowl. What's that? Oh, awesome, awesome super, super duper bowl. And as always, I'm Jeff Malinoff. That's Mark Souza, and we'll see you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program